a minute and talk about this uh, post that I made where I was asking about um, whether or not people um, knew how to make the Model 12 work with um, output 9 and 10. So I actually figured it out. Um, you know, part of it was talking to Tascam, part of it was watching a video, et cetera. But um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I did. So what you need to do is you need to get this software loop back. And uh, let me go ahead and open that up real quick. They offer this, this software with, with uh, two different versions. You know, you can get it with uh, a version that is, um, or with two different pieces of software. It's a bundle. You can get it with this, and then there's another one that's like hijack, audio hijack. But you just need the loop back. And then um, what you're going to do is you're going to make a couple different interfaces. Um, it does the pass-through interface, which just you know takes it um, channel one and two from the pass-through, and you send it to uh, output channels one and two, um, which is the left and right. And then those go to the monitors on channels nine and 10. That's kind of key right there. Um, same thing with the, uh, the input source. I have it set up to, um, to actually take my microphone in on um, my Tascam on, on uh, level three, which is um, you know where I have my uh, Shure MV7 plugged in. And then I have uh, you know the pass-through going to channels one and two. So let's see if I can actually show it here. I don't know why it's... Oh, hide monitors. No. So anyway, the main thing is is that your your output, your um output on channels one and two, you need to set to your monitors on uh nine and ten. And that that's the key right there, because normally by default they'd be going up here to this, you know, uh channel one and two. And uh and then once you've done that, um you're gonna change your uh your settings to actually um, the output in your sound settings to use uh, that um, that output, which is that loop back. And I, and I did nine ten mixer, um, showing that I have it go that that I have my mixer on nine and ten, and then I have another loop back for the mic three mic um, channel track three for the mic, but. Right now I have my mic plugged in over USB, right? So that's why I have my input set to, um, you know, I could have my input set to this. It's just screen recordings using the, the USB. But if I didn't, you know, I could just have XLR going out of my um, microphone and have it going right to, you know, whatever track on the Tascam. And then I would have the, um, I, would, I would set up the uh, input to use channel three. Now I think you can also do um, where you have like kind of a aggregate device or a, um, in that aggregate device would actually allow you to um, have the input and output, but I like to kind of keep it separate so that I can change my input and output. So you could have one like virtual audio device that has both inputs and outputs. But uh, I just have, you know, the output on this, this loopback device set up as Channel one and two, any uh, any application that sends channel one and two, including all my system settings, all my system stuff, sends it out channel one and two, and that actually virtually goes to channels nine and ten on the mixer, on uh, on the Tascam. So, I hope that makes sense. There is a there's a little confusing, you know, um, there's a little bit of a confusing um, suggestions out there about this MIDI audio setup. The problem with this is I was unable to get it to continually work. Right, so so you can create virtual interfaces here, right? Um, by hitting this aggregate or multi um, multi output, and you can also take your output. Like I could say, I could take the model twelve here, and then I could say on this USB audio twelve, I can go here to configure speakers for the output, and and I you can change it to nine and ten here. Now the problem is, is that this doesn't stay. <laughs> so, you know, um, some applications will actually default to using one and two. And, and so I think that they're not, it's the non multi-track applications. So, you know, the system, um, some apps like I, I would assume like OBS or, you know, um, you know, MPC and all of the audio engineering apps all 
you know, are, are able to recognize channels nine and 10 because they're a multi-track application, but everything else won't. And so even though it works temporarily by changing it to nine and 10 here, it doesn't stick. So the only thing I found that would, uh, that would, um, that would work for me is by actually creating these virtual ones and the virtual ones actually are managed, um, through, uh, the, uh, that other app. So in, in C right here inside of that virtual one that I created that nine ten mixer, it thinks that it's channel one and two. So all of the apps that want to send it to one and two work fine, but behind the scenes here, it's actually taking channels one and two on this loopback device and it's sending them to the task game on nine and 10. So I can use now, you know, this is all a good way to get my, um, single fader, you know, that fader will, will control, um, left and right channel. So I hope that was useful for someone there. And, uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn on.